I am a man of honor, integrity, and promise. I pursue all righteousness. I love my family. I will not put my family in harm's way. There is nothing that will keep me from doing the right thing. I am an ambassador of hope and a man of discipline. I am a man worth following. I am a Tyro. Hi, I'm Ron Tiarina. And I'm Catherine Tiarina. And today we're bringing you Tyro TV. Tyro TV is a show that's going to be a weekly aired in your institution or wherever you're at to help you become better, not bitter. Before we start, we want to share a little bit about our story and our journey and how we got to be where we're at today. In 1991, I was convicted of a crime I didn't commit. But despite being innocent what I was convicted of, I found myself in a place where nobody could take me at my word. For that fact, I was not living an exemplary life. And so I want to share with you what that was like. And, and for those of you who, who don't know our story, and, and we're hoping that we can, we can just give you a glimpse a little bit about where we, what we went through to get where we're at today. Um, because it takes hard work. It takes, to become successful in life, you've got to be willing to, to work hard and, and to become accountable. Mm -hmm. Well, in 1991, I was 25 years old, and I found myself um, fighting for my life and to maintain a family. You know, what do I know about living? You know, I'm 25 years old. I have two children. I'm married to a, to a young lady who's 24, and this is my wife. We've been married now 28 years. This is Kathy, of course. Mm -hmm. And and we, we, we experienced something that was so horrific. That we had no idea the battle we were about to embark upon. And we didn't have any skills. We didn't have any support. We didn't have any reference, anybody to go to, to say, how do we make it through this time together and come out stronger, keep our family intact, and allow Ron to continue to be that strong father for our children. Um, and that's what we want to bring to you. So as we talk about where we've been, um, we really want to let you know that we understand what it is you're going through right now, and we can help you get through this. You know, serving 15 years in prison, you know, that's no joke. You know, I, I, you know, I remember the first day in the county jail when, when I went there and I'm, I'm scared, I'm 25 years old, I have no concept of what this has never been there before. And, and to have that type of shock and awe experience to where when you go through the, when you get off the bus or, or the car and you go through the gates and you hear the gate behind you, ink, ink, right? And, and, you, and you, have to, you have to put on a mask right away. You know, the first thing I, I understood is I better, I can't let them see how, how afraid I really am. You know, I, I didn't want nobody to know that I was scared. And I, I, looking back now, I can see the men that were in this waiting room to be processed. I believe they all had the same mind battle that I was having. Um, and some had been in and out of this place, so they were pretty relaxed and they knew what was coming and what was, what was about to happen. But for me, I had no idea what it meant to have your, your picture taken, to have your fingerprints taken, and to be taken to a room until stripped down, you know, and then they give you your clothes and they send you to another room. They send you to another cell, a holding cell, and, and you're there with, and they give you a blanket, a pillowcase, and some white socks, some boxers, and you're there and you got to hold them, and, you, and you, you get to do this thing called wait. And I remember that experience of waiting in, in this cell that was so silent and the fear that was just engulfing me and, and, and crippling me that I had no idea what I was about ready to, to go into. Now, remember, I'm 25 years old and, and I'm married. I've been married five years at this time. We have two children, um, three and four, mm -hmm. and I'm freaking out. But, but at, in the back of my mind and, and still thinking about it, I'm wondering, what is happening with Kathy? I'm wondering, what is she going to do to take care of our boys while I'm, I'm being pushed in and, and thrown into this world of, of unknown for me? So as we are, as Ron's experiencing that on the outside, what we began to experience is I'm expecting everybody to run to me. Kathy, are you okay? You know, is there anything we can do for you and the boys? What I didn't expect was actually what I got, and that was, that was this shunning. Like people didn't know what to say, they didn't know what to do, and so instead of running to me, they, they ran away from me. Um, we started where, where people stopped inviting us over, they stopped coming over, mm -hmm. and we became social outcasts. And so I went from actually showing, like Ron, you didn't want to really show how you felt. I wanted to show how I felt, but then felt completely rejected, and, and that the way that I was feeling was somehow um, almost disgusting to people or, or yeah. a repellent to people. And so I put on the mask. And so I also had to put on the mask to be tough and hard and like, a, like 
it's okay, everything's fine, me and my children are fine, and begin to walk off and step off each hour of every day for the next 15 years. You know, as we both uh, realized that we were both in the same state of mind, and the state of mind is, is, is fear, that something had to happen. You know, uh, one of three things had to take place. Either you adapt, you die, or you move. Well, I couldn't move because I was locked up, and I, and I wasn't gonna take my own life, um, but I was gonna adapt, and something inside me rose up, and something inside Kathy rose up, and we come to know what it is now today, and it's called courage. Mm -hmm. I remember our first visit, um, when Kathy came to visit me, and, and if you guys remember in the county jail, when you, your first visit you get is through the glass, and you gotta pick up the phone. And, and, and some, some of us may have said, help me get out of here, help me, help me go, you know, do whatever you gotta do, get a lawyer, get, get the money, and, and, and that wasn't my case. And in, in my case, I began to realize, you know what, I'm, because I'm, you know, in the county jail, you get to think for the first time for real in your life, you know? There's no more distractions, there's no more, you're, you're not eating McDonald's, you're not watching TV, you're not listening to music. You get to meet this guy named Silence. And in my journey, as I was locked up in the county jail and locked in this cell, you know, it's just me. And so I got to hear myself think for the first time. And, and though I was fearful, something inside me, when we call it courage, started to really be birthed inside me because I had to leave that cell and I had to go to the day room. I had to face this environment head on with my head up. And, but I didn't have no, no reference point. I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know how to go and face these guys and, and they look tough, you know? They got their tatted down and, and then they look, they look pretty rough. And, and, and I didn't know how to go visit somebody in prison. So as I walk in for that first visit and pick up the phone and I'm so fearful and I'm in so much pain and hurting not just for me but for our sons and for Ron, and, and strength exuded from him and that was, that was really a turning point for our relationship that we began to run mm. to each other instead of avoiding or building walls between us. We built walls around us and around mm. our family. And so really, no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're starting your journey, whether you're finishing your journey, whether you're in the middle of your journey, uh, we have things that can help you navigate through this journey. You know, one of the things that, uh, guys, that while you're there incarcerated, you gotta surround yourself with men who, who are doing the right thing in there. You know, the only, the only thing a man has in prison, and, and I learned this quickly, is his word. And that's the first principle we just wanna just drop to you today, is are you a man of your word? Are you a man who can be taken, like if you borrow something from somebody, can they count on you to give it back? Or are you still trying to get over on people? Right. Are you somebody that wants to be a man of his word, but you really don't know how? You don't know how to change who you used to be and become who you really want to be, who you have the potential to be. You know, this, where Kathy and I are sitting today, this journey, it was hard work. It know? was not by accident. This, it didn't just happen. It didn't just that happen. We were successful in keeping our family together. You know, we, had, we came to a place in our relationship. Now, I know some of you guys may never been, in, you came into prison without uh, somebody uh, uh, in a relationship. Some of you may have been in a relationship, no longer in a relationship. And, but I believe that those of you who are not in a relationship want to be in a relationship when you get out. And you know, so the principles that we had to activate in our life, and the first guy I had to really um, activate is honesty. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to be honest with Kathy. You know, I remember coming home before I went to prison, um, and, and you know, and I was getting high and stuff like that, and, and I would come home with my eyes slanted. You know, you know guys what I'm talking about. You know, you come home and you, and you look to your wife or your lady and you're at home, and she says, are you high? And you look to her and you say, no, nah, baby, I ain't high. What makes you think I'm high? Well, the fact that your lips mm -hmm. are sticking to your teeth right. and your eyes are all squinting. You know, and, and so I had to come to a place of growing up, mm -hmm. you know, really seeing that what my actions and the, the choices I was making that led me up to a place in my life where I couldn't be taken at my word, where I'm desperately trying to figure out how do I keep Kathy in my life? I don't want her to leave me. I don't want to lose my sons, you know, you know, and... 
And, and I had to see that he was sincerely different and he was sincerely committed to changing for the better because I was terrified that if I was going to stand beside him and I was going to work hard at this relationship, that he wasn't going to change and he was going to be the same person when he came out. But as I began to see that courage, that integrity, that honor, and watch how he began to walk and interact with his sons in such a different way, and the way that he spoke to me and behaved and carried himself, and even the reports that I heard from other people that had loved ones in prison, they come back and they tell me about TJ, my husband. And so it just affirmed for me that, um, that I was doing the right thing and that this was indeed a man worth following and that I could wholly trust him and that I could wholly commit to him and that we were going to be safe. Completion of Tyro Dads is just the beginning of the opportunities available to you. As a Tyro Dad, you will be eligible to participate in workforce strengthening services to help prepare you for employment and open the doors to economic stability for you and your family. The workforce strengthening program starts with job ethics training. Once completed, you may be eligible to receive training to acquire your commercial driver's license while still inside prison. If getting a CDL is not for you, then there is also a welding training program you may be eligible for. As more programs are being added, there really is something for almost everyone. If you think you have what it takes to be a Tyro or just want to know more, contact your local Ridge Project facilitator or your caseworker. Welcome back to Tyro TV. You know, part of our, our journey is, and the things that we've learned, is about how do you teach other people um, to practice the principles that, that we were able to ignite and to help birth within us Right, not just how you, how you teach other people that, but just really making sure that we are reinforcing and informing you that as you learn principles, that they're going to be tested. And that's how you really know that they've really become part of who you are. You know, my, one of my greatest tests that I had to face was, uh, for those of you who don't know my, all, all our stories, I want to share a little bit about it, is um, I was released from prison in 2001. And in 2001, I literally walked out of the county jail still dressed in my prison blues. And that was a moment in our lives that was just just tremendous joy, tremendous gratefulness. So we had just done 10 years together, raised the boys mm -hmm. from being three and four, now they're 13, 14, gone from being on welfare to now owning our own house. And I say our, because it was something that we accomplished together while Ron was in prison and Ron's released. And so after, after doing the 10 years and coming home and, 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 and that's, there's some more stories in that, but it was six months later, something traumatic took place in our life. Six months later, uh, we're coming home, we just got groceries, and, and the phone rings, and Kathy goes to pick up the phone. And it's our attorney uh, telling Kathy that the Court of Appeals had just overturned my release, and they were giving me a week to turn myself back in. And that was a day where we had to make a conscious decision mm -hmm. Are we going to really practice what we've been preaching or teaching or what we've been learning? Or are we going to just throw the towel in and run? Are we really different and changed? Are we really who we say we are? Because if you're not who you say you are, gentlemen, if you are not who you say you are, you will be exposed for who you really are. And that's what tests do for us. They are going to expose us and show us where we're weak at. And they're also going to show us where we're strong at. So, so but let me back up a little bit. So I, I, I'm in the courthouse. I, you know, and guys, you guys can relate to this because we believe that if we were given that one chance to go before the judge, just that one chance, we believe we can convince him why we're worth now being released, that why we're now worthy to have freedom again. Well, I was given this chance. And, and when I went back to court, I wrote the, the, the speech of my life because I know he was going to ask me, why should I let you out? And so I, 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 I studied, I prayed, I was in there, I was ready to get it down. I, I went in there. So I'm dressed in my orange jumpsuit. I'm standing next to my attorney and behind me is Kathy and our family and, and in the courtroom is a standing room only of our family and friends. And do you remember crying, guys? You, you cry the cry where the snots are coming out and, and you, you <laughs> have you ever cried that cry? Well, I was crying that cry at that particular moment in my life. And, and the judge said to me, he said, Mr. Tiarina, I understand that, you've been live, that you were not living an exemplary life. But before I make my decision, how did, how did it go on? Yeah, let me tell this okay. story. I love this story. It's like permanently in, ingrained on my memory. So the judge says, Mr. Tiarina, I understand you've been maintaining your innocence for this past 
11, 11 years. years. That's right. Uh, however, I also know that you were not living an exemplary life. So tell me why I should release you and what you've learned. And so I watched Ron because I knew he had this speech. I knew he had laid out everything he'd been doing. And I watched him fold the paper and push it aside mm -hmm. through the tears, begin to talk about what he had learned over the last 11 years and how he had learned that this world could take everything from him. They could take his money, his his reputation, his family, his freedom, but the one thing the world could not take away from him. And gentlemen, that was my word. They could take away everything from you, but they can't take your word. And that's what I learned. And I looked to the judge and I said, Your Honor, if you were to release me today, that's what I want to do. I want to instill in my two sons how to grow up to become men of their word. 15, 20 minutes later, I walked out of the county jail no parole, no probation. Still in his prison blues. And I still like, have my prison that's blues That's how today. fast he was released. It was, it was an amazing, an amazing day for us. It was. You know, and so fast forward six months, the Court of Appeals overturned my release. They gave me a week to turn myself back in. And, you know, what's the first thing I'm thinking of? Vámonos para México, right? Sí, yo hablo español también. Right, well, I mean, we're ready to run. I mean, my whole mind is, I know what what's on the other side of those fence, and, and I don't want to go back. I'm three months pregnant, and I don't want to raise another child in a prison visiting room. So, you know, we started calling people, and, and great people were giving us some really bad advice. You know, they were offering us money, offering us cars, they'll help us cross the border, whatever you want to do, because they were saying, this is not fair. Mm -hmm. and, and as I'm crying, I'm looking to Blake and Brandon, I'm, and I'm looking at Kathy, and Kathy says to me, whatever you want to do, we'll do it. And, and I looked at them. I said, don't you get it? He didn't send the sheriff after me. He didn't send a warrant for my arrest. He took me at my word. He gave me a week to turn myself back in. And, and I knew in my heart that I had no choice. So I looked at Blake and Brandon, and they're waiting. They're waiting because they know in the next 30 seconds, we was either going to be on the run mm -hmm. or we were going to go back into prison. And... And I looked to my sons and I said, I said, I said, boys, Blake and Brandon, I said, you, you have to do the right thing no matter what. And as horrific as that situation was, it cemented our future. It cemented the opportunity for Ron to exemplify that he really was someone different, for our family to set a precedent that says we do hard things together because it's the right thing. But, but you got to understand, gentlemen, this moment in our lives didn't happen just in that moment in our lives. Right. This was a, a preparation for this moment in our life. This journey that we took, we were practicing these principles that made us who we are today way before this happened. Because right. practice does not make perfect. Kathy and I do not have a perfect relationship. But we have is a healthy and it's permanent. Practice makes permanent. So here comes the test, guys. Here's the test. Do I run or do I stay? When I looked to the boys and I said, I said, guys, the right thing is always the right thing no matter what. And the decision was there. It was clear to me and to us that I had no choice because I was taken at my word and I wasn't going to give it away ever again. And understanding that his decisions were impacting not just him, but everyone in his sphere of influence. So his decision impacted me, it impacted our children, it impacted his parents, his brothers, his sisters, our friends our relatives, our neighbors, but it impacted them in a way that created and began to really create the impetus of our legacy. Character is everything, guys. If your skills still outpace your character, then you're still asleep. Your character must always outpace your skill. So if, if, if we can leave you something today, are you, are you a man of your word? Are you taking at your word? Can, can somebody loan you a 16 cent soup and not worry about it that they're gonna get it back? Can your family count on you to do the right thing while you're in there, not get tickets? Can they, can, and, and, and not get in debt while you're in there? Can your family, can your, can, the, can your children count on you, dad, that when you tell them you're gonna write them a letter, that they can take you at your word and they can go to that mailbox like clockwork, right? They can go to that mailbox every Friday and open it up and there's a letter from dad. Tyro Dads will help you to see who you really are on the inside by coming to terms with your past, present, and future. You will begin to move forward by using your time on the inside to transform yourself. We know you are not the only one serving time. Your family is too. 
Overcoming the issues that existed prior to and during incarceration are often more than many families can survive. Tyro Dads has a unique method of reaching and healing families based on Ron and Kathy Tirina's own personal experience with incarceration. Tyro Dads works exclusively with incarcerated fathers who have minor children. The program lasts for 10 weeks and focuses on intensive character development. You'll be taught to take responsibility for your actions, to own it. You will be prepared to overcome the obstacles of your incarceration and transition back into your home and community, both successfully and permanently. Upon successful completion of this program, you will earn the title of Tyro, which means a warrior, someone learning something new. You'll be one of the honored, a man worth following. If you think you have what it takes to be a Tyro or just want to know more, contact your local Ridge Project facilitator or your caseworker. Welcome back to Tyro TV. In this segment, we really want to give you tips on how to really strengthen and build your family. Maybe you have never heard about Tyro program and maybe you are a Tyro. We want to tell you a little bit about the Tyro program and how it got started. The word Tyro is a Latin word which means apprentice, novice, someone learning something new, a warrior or founding father. And it was out of our journey that we began to realize that, you know what, in order to be taken at our word or to become people worth following, we needed to understand how these precepts work, how these principles work. How is it that, you know, and I, what I've come to understand is true leaders, true men with grit, true fathers, true husbands that take care of their family, that are home on a Friday night, right? They're not born, they're made. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Tyro program is. It teaches us how to become a, a not only a man of character, but a man worth following. And you gotta practice and practice and practice. Because if, from the moment you wake up, if you're not having some sort of mind battle or some sort of uh, battle about what it is doing the right thing, then you're still asleep. And as you create strong relationship and, and become those men worth following and pour into your children in order to cut off those generational cycles, and in order to stop leading your children into paths of destruction, but instead leading in your children into futures that are defined by, by righteousness and peace and hope, then you are giving them the keys and the very best gifts to ensure that they have a successful future. And by doing that, you're also setting yourself up for a healthy relationship whether you're in a current relationship or whether maybe you want to be in a relationship in the future. You know, unintentionally, I was leading my sons into a path of destruction. I wasn't even conscious of this, but this is the fruit of my labor, if you will, right? But now that well, I'm conscious, and the saying, guys, is conscious and symbols, oh no, I'm sorry, signs and symbols are for the conscious man. And if you can really start getting a hold of that and start waking up to the reality of what it means to be a man of honor, to be taken at your word, to be a man worth following, you can begin to lay a, a legacy, a building a legacy for your children and for generations to come that they are going to be proud to be your son, your daughter, dad. Wait, let me, can I share a story? Um, mm -hmm. I want to share a story about Blake. So you heard a little bit about our story and how Ron went to prison, how our, it changed our lives and transformed it and made us closer and stronger, and then how he came home and how he had to go back. So when he went back to prison, about six, eight months later, uh, we had an invitation from... Um, from Congress, actually, to a congressional luncheon for my son to go and speak before a congressional luncheon. And so they wanted to gather some at-risk youth to really share what the struggles were and, and why it was or how it was that some of these young people were being able to overcome the obstacles in their lives. So my oldest son, Blake, was invited, and he's standing up there, and he had, just like his father, had prepared this big speech. And as he begins to talk, he kind of, he talks about what he's doing and how he formed this club to really come against um, negative peer pressure and how to, how to really build positive peer pressure. And then he says, you know, many of you sitting in those chairs are wondering what it was that it, in my life that helped me to overcome these things and to become a leader. Well, let me tell you that it's probably going to surprise you that in my life, I was a very strong male role model that happens to be a prisoner inside the state penitentiary in Ohio. And so Blake went on to talk about how his dad was his hero, his mentor, his encourager, and how his dad has infused him with the character and the skills and the support that he needed to overcome all these obstacles. And so as I walked back that day, I mean, um, the last thing Blake said was, you know, my dad didn't just tell me what character was like, my dad showed me. He taught me that the right thing is always the right thing no matter what the price. And 
that was that moment when Ron had to go back to prison and how it transformed our son's lives. So your actions, no matter how small you think that they are, they are leaving a huge impact on your children. And we want to teach you the things that you need to be doing in order to really transform your children's lives, even from where you are. Not only, not only show you and teach you, but really encourage you, because a lot of this stuff, guys, you've heard it, you know it, but maybe you never acted on it. You know, for whatever reason that you've told yourself, you know what? I remember when uh, Blake and Brandon were like five and four, right? And, uh, and, and Kathy asked me, why aren't you writing the boys? And, and, and I said, um, well, they don't write me back. And she said, well, they're five and four. So <laughs> they're not writing right, yet. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the key principles of becoming a man of honor is you, you got to quit looking at you because it's not about you. It's not about me. You, you know, know, when Ron began wanting everything for us and nothing from us, I mean, that was huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were able to just trust him. You know, being a family is, is, is amazing. The role that I get to play now, I don't, I don't have to take out the garbage. I get to. I don't have to tuck my daughter into bed at night. I get to. You know, my daughter and I, we go horseback riding. I do not like horses. Mm -hmm. I'm not a horse guy. I'm not, but I love my daughter. So what, what I learned, not being home, but yet still having influence over my sons um, over the years when they would come to visit me and stuff like that, that it was up to me to be engaged and to, and to not force myself in their life, but to be the father, no matter. To be available. And, and yeah, to be, to be accessible mm -hmm. to them where no matter what, no matter how far apart phone calls and the visits, that I'm here. You know, I couldn't give them the moon. You know, I'm not perfect, but I'm here. And I think, dads, if you can get a hold of that, that that's what your children want. They don't want Nike shoes. They don't want flat screen TVs. Those are fillers. You know, Those are things that just fill the emptiness that they feel because you're not there. They want you, dad. Our hope for you is that you're able to take these skills that we bring to you on a weekly basis to help you become a better father, a better husband, a better you. Playing catch, basketball, laughing, and enjoying each other's company. These are all normal things on the outside, but many times are missed in a visitation setting. Tyro Dads brings the same fun experience to the inside through family days. As a Tyro Dad, you have the opportunity to participate in this fantastic event. Family Day is designed to allow fathers and families to engage with each other through activities designed to stimulate communication, learning, and play. Family Days will not only be a highlight for you, but for your children as well. The Ridge Project has strategically developed Family Day as an opportunity to help you connect with your child throughout your separation and help both of you develop skills to continue building your relationship when you return home. If you think you have what it takes to be a Tyro or just want to know more, contact your local Ridge Project facilitator or your caseworker. Well, this brings us to the close of our show today on Tyro TV, and we want to thank you for joining us. I'm Ron Tiarina. And I'm Kathy Tiarina. Until next time, we, we are, are rooting, rooting for you. you. I am a man of honor. I am a man of integrity. I am a man of faith. I am the antidote. I am a man of discipline. I am a leader. I am strong. I am a man worth following. I am a tyrant.